Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy to have you all tuned in to our second webinar in a series of weekly webinars for May that are geared to help organizations learn from the best workplaces. This webinar series is hosted by Great Place to Work in Sri Lanka in collaboration with Daily FT. Great Place to Work is the global authority on workplace culture. Over the last 30 years, surveying more than 100 million employees globally has contributed to deep insights to define what makes a great workplace. Great Place to Work helps organizations quantify their culture and produce better business results by creating a high trust work experience for all your employees. The inaugural Best IT and IT Enabled Services Workplaces in Sri Lanka 2020 list was published after evaluation of approximately 4,000 employees across organizations ranging from 20 to 500 employees in the industry during the period 2019 to 2020. This program recognizes organizations that have undertaken the Great Place to Work's rigorous two lens model of the Trust Index Employee Survey and the Culture Audit People Practices Analysis Framework and match the global qualification criteria required to be a great work. And today we have with us four panelists representing four such best workplaces. And today's webinar is brought to you in collaboration with Classcom, Sri Lanka Association of Software and Services Companies. Firstly, we have 99X Technology. 99X Technology has been a list maker in the best workplaces in Sri Lanka for seven consecutive years and is also ranked eighth among the Asia's best workplaces in 2020 for small and medium category. Representing 99X Technology today, we have Mr. Mano Sekaram, its co founder and CEO. He's a serial tech entrepreneur and a thought leader. He's also the chairman of Lankan Angel Network and a board member of Information and Communication Technology Agency of Sri Lanka, and has also served as a past chairman of Slascom. Secondly, we have Boatpack and Iron One Technologies. Boatpack and Iron One Technologies featured in the Best Workplaces list for 2019 and is also a list maker in the inaugural list of Best Small and Medium IT and IT Enabled Services Workplaces for 2020. We have with us today Mrs. Lakmini Vijay Sundara, co-founder and CEO of Iron One Technologies and Boatpack. She has a wealth of experience in leading global competitive expansion in enterprise solutions. She is also the overall winner of the SARC Woman Entrepreneur of the Year 2019 and the Steve International Business Awards in Leadership and Innovation. Thirdly, we have Edge Connect Private Limited, making it to the inaugural list of best small and medium IT and IT enabled services for 2020. Representing Edge Connect, we have Mr. Dilush Pereira, the CEO of Edge Connect Private Limited. Mr. Pereira has over 19 years of experience with a core background of financial and business performance management of sustainable short term and long term initiatives. He's also an advocate for exponential growth, planning, and implementation. And last, but certainly not least, we have Synergen Health. Synergen Health has featured in the best workplaces in Sri Lanka list for two years. And representing Synergen Health, we have its co-founder and co-managing partner, Mr. Duminda Gunwardhan, joining us all the way from Dallas, Texas. He is a co-founder, an investor, and an advisor to healthcare and other technology startups, including Synergen Technology Labs. He has a wealth of experience in consulting services and has led the growth of Synergen Health from a startup to feature in the Inc. 5000 in USA. And finally, we warmly welcome Mrs. Shanika Ratnayaka, founder CEO of Great Place to Work in Sri Lanka, to moderate by steam panel of speakers. Before setting up Great Place to Work in Sri Lanka, Shanika spent over 25 years of her corporate life in the IT industry, and she was also the founding executive director of Slesco. So over to you, Shanika. Thank you, uh, Kaneru, and good afternoon. And a warm welcome to all our participants who have joined us today. We do hope all of you are keeping healthy and safe in these times of uncertainty. And thank you for taking the time to join this webinar and learn from the insights shared by these best workplaces. Warm welcome also to our esteemed speakers and congratulations on making the inaugural list of best small and medium IT ITEX workplaces in Sri Lanka in 2020. The format of today's webinar is simple and will be made up of two parts based on the workplace culture pre-COVID and the second part will be on post-COVID. The first session 
will focus on pre-COVID as each of these organizations will assess and recognize before the pandemic hit us in March 2020. In this session, I would invite each speaker to spend 45 minutes and share with us, or the audience, in brief, their journey of becoming a great workplace, what differentiates them as an employer of choice, and time permitting, share a best practice in this space. At the end of this session, uh, we may take questions that are relevant that have been raised if we have time, else we will move on to the second round and take the questions at the end. So a few ground rules quickly before we start. All participants have been muted and are encouraged to interact with us by raising questions via the chat session. Speakers, we encourage all of you to keep your webcams on so that uh, everybody can see you but keep your mic on mute so we won't have any feedback. Please unmute yourself in your, in, when you are invited to speak and put it back on mute until, until and unless a question is raised directly to you or you want to add a comment to something uh, based on another speaker. And finally, if any of you are uh, going over your allocated time, I may have to butt in and stop you. Okay, on that note, let me first invite uh, Mr. Dilush Pereira, CEO of HConnect, who is a baby in this panel of great workplaces as a result of making it um, for the first time to one of our lists uh, that, have been, that he's presenting. Over to you, Dilush. Thank you, Shanika. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for organizing this. We are also learn as Shanika mentioned that uh, we are first time participating for Great Place to Work um, and then we have learned a lot from uh, working with them so thank you very much. So a bit about Edge Connect uh, we have started in 2012 uh, started with eight employees and grown up to 200 so mainly we are, our main customer is Apparel Hydromani Group uh, where we do the finance and uh, commercial operation uh, supporting them, the apparel business. So in, in uh, early 2012, the concept started in the group. So it was a challenging uh, opportunity uh, for us to uh, see how the shared service function works in the group. Initially, we had to start transfer the employees who were in the clusters, the business units, uh, to a central location. Uh, so. There are people who have been recruited with different set of values, different cultures where uh, we have to mix it. So the first thing what we created inside Edge Connect is to set a, a, a tone, with a, a core value system that we believe firmly, which has taken a long way. So Edge Connect is built, built on mainly on these five core values, customer centricity, teamwork, integrity, uh, innovation, and quality. So we had to conduct a lot of value cascading uh, to our team members, where we use experiential learning with case studies, uh, with a uh, lot of uh, interactive sessions. So that really helped us to uh, share our philosophy with the team members. So if you look at our vision, vision says exceed expectation. When you want to exceed expectation, the speed matters a lot. For us to run to that level of speed, what is needed is to empower the team members. So to empower the team members, we need to have that, uh, again, the, the core value system running in our organization. So to run according to that speed, we have to do a lot of changes. The environment is changing. So the changing environment needs uh, the change in the systems, changing infrastructure, and mainly changing the people. So culture plays a major role. So you can have a beautiful strategy, but culture eats strategy for breakfast, as Peter Drucker has said. So very important that we understand that, and then we move forward in that line. So once this value system is in place, this has to start from the top. The leadership team needs to live the value. Every time we focus and nourish the leadership with these values and it became part of the leaders. So engagement, so 
engagement is very very important when it comes to uh, the team members engagement so the leaders started engaging starting from the morning huddles uh, where the team gets involved and to the large forums like symposiums and even the 200 plus employees are connected via whatsapp where we can communicate so that we avoid that uh, corridor discussion and the uh, ambiguity among the employees so the clarity of communication uh, was a key success factor for us uh, to create trust among our employees then we had a lot of sessions like which was facilitated by hr but it was driven by the senior leadership team i always believe that every leader needs to take that hr leadership role and running the organization so it's not only limited to hr so people need to believe their heads of departments their team leaders and and see how how the how how this this happens so we had a few events like you know the fantabulous friday we started celebrating the uh, the best team members and on top of that one of the key uh, element that we use is the well being group wide we have implemented a concept called wow wow means wonder of well being so which we have five parts of it that is physical mental relational financial and environmental so this created a complete well being structure of the so this actually started from the corporate hr who created this concept and we, we implemented at edge connect as well so that actually built the confidence and we had uh, various activities because sometimes you might be physically and mentally well uh, uh, okay but then you will have a problem with your financial well being so we had to educate people how they become financially independent how they manage their money how they manage their uh, entire life so i believe with all these factors sharika that we we were able to build trust in our employees initially uh, being a very uh, within a very short period of time thank you thank you dilush for sharing uh, those insights and um, letting us know about the wow factors that drive uh, the culture of um, h connect uh, let me now move on to uh, the only lady on our panel um, who is uh, lakmini vijayasundara no stranger to most uh, and uh, pose the same question to Lucky. Tell us uh, what the magic about uh, um, your organization is and what you all do to differentiate yourselves. Yeah. So, thanks, Shanika, and thanks. Uh, great places to work. Uh, it's, it's our second year. Uh, we started last year and uh, we, we learned so much, actually, myself too, because there are so many aspects that we hadn't really looked at earlier that uh, was so evident going through the whole program so we really appreciate all the uh, you know guidance and all these um, uh, tips and things that you all uh, teach us it's, it's been great so um, when when talking about um, our experience with great places to work and uh, how how uh, we achieve this um, we i mean we are really happy to see that uh, our scores uh, were really great in all five aspects of the great places to work areas and specifically i'd like to sort of touch on two areas that we did you know exceptionally well which is pride and comradeship so uh, I'd, I'd like i'd love to share some of our experiences and some of the things we believe we did to contribute to that so starting out um, our company is uh, actually is two companies and these two companies in fact has a mix of four uh, divisions out of them Three of them are uh, sort of innovative products, which we are uh, sort of homegrown products built in Sri Lanka, taken out to the globe, uh, where we are sort of striving with ambitious plans of, you know, becoming number one in certain sectors. And the fourth one is an interesting one, where we are doing services to very high-end brands like Victoria's Secret, etc., in the US. So it's quite a wide variety of things we are doing. And um, within this, uh, if I take pride first. Uh, it's, it's something that, um, you know, fr from the beginning, from, from myself to our leadership team, Rajita, Tarindu, Buddhika, you know, all of us, uh, the, the people in the company have different experiences. So if you take the developers, uh, some of them may never have direct client experience. But if you take the sales and the delivery support and some of those people, they directly get to meet our clients. 
So what we did is uh, we, we made sure that everybody sort of understands how important and how uh, impactful the kind of work that they do, irrespective of whether they, in fact, face the client or do not face the client. So for that, we've done a lot of hard work in terms of those of us who meet the clients. We take a lot of videos, we take a lot of testimonies, we actually talk to the clients, video it, record it, take pictures, and bring this back almost on a weekly basis back to office. Uh, there are a couple of things that we do. So one is a town hall meeting that we started, uh, I would say, just over a year ago. Quarterly, uh, myself, leadership team, we, we actually run through a video as well as talk about our stories and and share this with everybody, everybody in the team. And it's, it's I mean, it's a marvelous experience. It's, 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 there's a lot of energy because you can see the sparkling uh, sparkles in the eyes of uh, even the software engineers and everybody in, in that respect. And then we have, we have set up uh, television, uh, televisions across the office. So uh, constantly we see people huddling around and seeing their new uh, experiences uh, because uh, client, client, um, uh, client videos and things are shown and our marketing team runs that in fact. And so, so in terms of uh, pride, this is the kind of thing that we do because our, our, our goals really, I mean, there are a couple of things that everybody knows about. Uh, we want to be a unicorn, we're working towards it. It's ambitious. And as, you, as we all know, Sri Lanka doesn't still have a unicorn company from IT. Uh, and then we want to be a top 100 global company. It's known by everybody. We talk about it a lot. We work towards it. We, in, in terms of some of our innovative products like Boatpack, we, we talk about, we are working towards getting the number one market share globally. Uh, so th these are things that every time we make a move, everybody's sort of proud of. So that's, that's pride. And I'd like to just touch on comradeship. So that, that's something we're really proud of because we won the number one comradeship in Great Places to Work last year. And um, it, it's an area that I guess we, 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 we have a, a society or a welfare society. Uh, in, it's, it's not part of HR. It's, it's a group of people from the teams representing all divisions, all different types of uh, levels of people. And they set up the whole um, event calendar and all sorts of other activities that happen literally monthly. So this, this goes right throughout. And I, I just want to take one of those examples if we have time, Shanika. Uh, it's, we have this thing called ITL, which is run, it, it's our sports day, but it's ITL, like the Indian Premier League, where you, you've got the owners, you've got the managers, and then they have to auction and get their teams. So this, this whole process runs like three months or more, where there's so much banter and fighting and videos of all sorts of things, players trying to you know, show off how good they are, and you know, so it's a lot of crazy fun. And then finally, the, the sports day is one day, but it's, it, it's almost like quarter of the year of so much of social media going on within the company. And I believe that also contributes to the comradeship. And, um, and like, there's, a, there's a lot more, but since it's a short uh, uh, talk, I'll just end there. So thanks. Thank you very much for sharing those insights and letting us know how you create the energy and drive engagement at uh, An One and Boatpack. And good luck with your uh, strategy to be a unicorn in the industry as well. Um, I would That's now nice. like to move on to, um, to a veteran, really, Manas Sekaram, who has led 99X Technology to being a great place to work for seven consecutive years. We saw those data points earlier, while also making it to Asia's list of best workplaces for three consecutive years. Uh, no easy run, I can tell you. Over to you, Manas. You're on mute, Manu. Yes, uh, now you should okay. hear me loud and clear. Yeah. Okay, it's no easy run, uh, Shanika, that's what I was telling you. Yeah, I mean, to do this consecutively for seven years is no easy um, yeah, task. And I think uh, that, that goes to show uh, when you build a great place to work, you want to keep it that way. And I think that is what will happen to the rest of you guys and people who will join us in this journey. But uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Great Place to Work for inviting. I think this is very timely. 
um, to share this. But uh, I, I think I have, right through the years, I have said why we are special. I think the first thing about building a company is, is, is to have the best people work for you, right? Um, because we, we, we are in the people's business and uh, today uh, this is a new economy, it's, it's a digital economy and in, in digital uh, economy people are the center, right? And it is their intellectual capabilities will take the company to the next level. So our goal is to hire the best. For you to hire the best you need to create an environment where the best will get attracted. Um, and then over a period of time, we, we knew, we found out how do you attract the best people to work for you. So we have this entire open culture, right? You're able to come challenge, be yourself. Uh, we don't want conformity, uh, conform, people who will come and come for, we, we respect diversity. So in order to do this, uh, there is something is, which is very important, the ethos of our company's culture but it's about leadership credibility. People will join you because you are a very credible organization. Credibility gives you trust. If you trust what we do. So I think that is one of the reasons for seven consecutive years we have been, because there's a lot of trust between uh, management and employees. So there's this is one cooperation about trust. And um, we walk the talk, we empathize with people. And uh, we, we believe uh, in, in, in a different management that everyone is a leader. So, so we, we practice this. This is one of our great practice of leaders without title. They're a very flat organization. You can challenge and you can be whoever you want to be in a company. This is very difficult because you will have diverse view. Uh, but then we, we are able to manage it. So, so, so we are truly a, a people-centric organization. And what, uh, what this has done to become a great place to work. If you look at our financial performance, I mean, you know, I think we're one of the best in the industry. I think uh, we were rated as uh, LND's number one IT company for last year and the top most uh, uh, admired company. I think we were the only non-listed company in 2018 to make that list. So I, I think there's a direct relationship between our great place to work and our financial performance, right? We are a equity funded company. We have grown uh, compoundedly 40% and our, our, our EBIT is 68% in, in compounding in the last three years. So I think we have absolutely have a fantastic financial results. So employees do get engaged in, in, in a lot of many ways, but I think one significant is that we always try to focus on their strength, create a blue ocean for them, everyone is not equal, uh, and then try to guide them to excel in what they do. And that basically has given us a, a fantastic, last year we put on 100 people, and it was very easy to recruit for us, because you, you really know uh, that the best and the good won't join the company, and it has helped, and, and I think it has helped uh, the, the program itself and being on this uh, list because constantly we are challenged. Thank you. Thank you, Manu, for that. And also for, most importantly, I think acknowledging, as most of you would, that yours is uh, about people. Your business is about people, right? It's a people's business. And uh, more importantly, that um, you are investing in them and uh, making sure that you attract the right talent um, by creating the right environment and culture. Uh, to which you can attract and retain uh, the right talent. Uh, importantly, at this stage, before I move on to Duminda, I would like to stress on something Mano said. Uh, you know, they've created the culture, they've uh, invested in the right people, and they nurture their people, and they've seen the results, right? And I think it's timely for me to mention that uh, as we've done a lot in the past, um, that uh, uh, independent research uh, done on behalf of Great Place to Work by financial institutions have shown uh, that great workplaces outperform other organizations by as much as three times in terms of their performance, in terms of their return on their stock uh, in their respective industries, right? So this is um, a research finding. And the second and important factor which will come more relevant to our second part of our uh, session today is that great workplaces immune to market shocks. Right? So they do uh, get impacted like we, we all will be in, in this pandemic time. 
uh, are not immune to market shock, but come out of the curve much faster. So, you know, people talk about uh, flattening the curve in different, different ways, and we'll talk about that more in the second half. So before we go uh, to that, can I now um, extend my final invite to Duminda, uh, who will be joining, who's joining us all the way from Dallas, Texas, uh, at the ungodly hour of 5 a.m., I believe. Uh, do tell us about Synergy Care, Duminda. Thank you, Shanika. I hope you can hear me. Um, so first of all, I just want to thank Great Place to Work. Uh, we are humbled to be part of the list. I think we've been uh, certified four years and we've been on the top 25 or in the top list two years in a row. Uh, before I get started, I just want to give a little background about Synergen Health. So although we are, you know, we are looked upon as IT enabled services company, we are also um, a solutions and products company as well. So Synergen Health is um, is a revenue cycle, uh, technology and data driven revenue cycle company, and we cater to the U.S. healthcare market. Most of our clients are large uh, enterprise clients, uh, hospital systems, uh, publicly traded companies, and so on. And um, we've started in 2011 and grown uh, rapidly. We've been in the Inc. 5000 list five years in a row now, and Part of our, in addition to our services team, we have a large uh, software team where we build our own products and solutions. So our services team provide the domain expertise. They are the first users before we productize this and take this to market. So we have analytic solutions, we have uh, payment solutions, uh, workflow solutions, ro robotic process automation solutions. And right now we're doing AI and uh, machine learning as well. And some of these solutions, uh, for example, our payment solutions, we are doing about 70,000 transactions a month. These are, these are for consumers and it's rapidly growing. So we are not just a, a services company, we're truly a technology and technology enabled services company. So why are we a great places to work? And I have to agree with Dilush here. Uh, it all starts with our values um, and our culture. Um, when we first started the company, um, we defined our core value system, we call it class, uh, caring, learning, accountable, sharing, and socially responsible. And we also want to find out what our real DNA is, who are we compared to the rest of uh, you know, the other companies, and we talk about innovation, excellence, and joy. And we start off uh, with our value system from the time of recruiting. Uh, so you know, once we screen our candidates, the entire recruiting process is based on the value system. And then once we onboard people into our company, uh, all the training, the appraisals, promotions, the value system and the culture is really part of it. So this is a significant piece of our company and developing our culture. We are also a very flat organization, just three levels, you know, the leadership management and everyone else. Um, we have also a very uh, open door policy. So uh, Surinder, who's the managing director in Sri, La Sri Lanka, he has this, uh, his example, he says, you know, our new recruits knock on his door and not really it's open door, come and borrow his uh, iPhone charger. And that's kind of kind of shows how flat the organization is. Um, in terms of our one thing we're really proud of is our equality pro uh, policy. So we we don't, you know, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk and uh, we don't, you know, in terms of our recruiting remuneration, our retention policies, uh, it, you know, it covers all ethnic genders, um, you know, age, age, uh, all of that. And, and we are very proud that 51% of our company is female, 49% uh, of our middle management is female, and 33% of our leadership team is female as well. So we, we don't discriminate at all. I think there is uh, no glass ceiling. It's great to see Lakmini and, you know, Sri Lanka is a country where we had our first world leader. So sky is the limit for everyone. Uh, in terms of best practices, um, I want to share two. Um, one is our innovation and suggestion process. So we have a process where we get anyone in the company, whether it's the latest recruit or the most senior person who can contribute to providing suggestions or innovations um, on a bi-weekly, bi-monthly, uh, I'm sorry, twice a, twice a month, bi-monthly process. And, and here we get amazing ideas, uh, whether it's to build a new product, optimize a new process, could be something as simple as you know uh, updating our training processes, but this has grown, and we reward our teams, not only the ones who give the ideas, but also the teams who go implement it. And over the years, some of our core products, which have taken to the market, came within our company. So we're very proud of our collaborative uh, 
nature of our innovation process. The, the other thing we want to talk about engagement, uh, we are rapidly scaling. So, you know, we are close to 500 people and how do we keep um, our teams uh, engaged? So we created a house system, just like what we all went through when we were in, in school. Uh, it was creatively named after the Game of Thrones. So, you know, you have House Stark, House Targaryen and so on. And we have most of our company events, whether it's a sports event, a company event, where everyone is part of our house and we compete. There's a lot of, like Lakmini said, uh, said there's a lot of banter and competition. But it also gets our teams to integrate with different team members, different groups of our company. And when we are rapidly growing, this has been a tremendous success. Um, I can talk about a lot more things like our training processes. We have a lot of company events, about six to eight a year. Um, you know, we, we are a company which provides our bonuses twice a year. So that gives us a chance. And even if we had a great 10 months of the year and a bad two months, we are not penalizing our, our team members. So every six months we do that. And I think it has created a really wonderful place uh, to work. And like what Dilu stated, um, you know, have, building a great culture is not about, you know, we have a great HR and talent management team, but it comes from the leadership all the way to everyone within the company. And it's a team sport. So I want to give credit to of a leadership team in Sri Lanka, especially Surinda, who should be speaking here instead of me, and um, the rest of our managers and team members as well. Uh, in terms of Thank challenges, I, okay, go ahead, Shanika. I'm going to have to stop you here, Duminda, and let's take some of the challenges maybe in the in the second round as we move on. Um, so basically, thank you very much. Minister for sharing with us, uh, you know, the class value system that you all have implemented and also details of uh, the inclusiveness that you all have uh, kind of demonstrate within uh, your uh, work, workplace. Um, not to uh, also mentioning the best practices uh, in relation to innovation and engagement that drives uh, the way you all do business at uh, Synergy and Health. I'm sorry to have to um, cut you off before we discuss the challenges, but in the interest of time, I have to move on um, to the second session, which actually is a more challenging uh, um, time for us in business. Uh, and we're moving on to, as, as I mentioned earlier, we were in the pre-COVID, uh, why are we great workplaces? How did you all become great workplaces? What is the magic? What is it that you do to differentiate yourself uh, already in the pre-COVID uh, timeframe? And now we would like to switch um, gears and find out what makes you all um, a great workplace of so how do you continue to remain relevant and a great workplace in this post-COVID era um, and once again I will invite each speaker to spend maybe slightly less time three to four minutes and share insights on uh, three key areas they are what are the challenges that you are now dealing with uh, in the context of your employees uh, looking inwardly um, and how do you all manage that crisis what are you doing to keep uh, your employees connected and how do you manage the health and well-being of this uh, your most valuable resource? And finally, what are some of the people initiatives that you are rolling out in order to mitigate this crisis? Okay, so this time let's uh, reverse the order a little bit and I will uh, start this round by inviting uh, Mano Sekram maybe to take a first go at this. Mano? Uh, unmute, please. <laughs> Okay. okay, thanks. Uh, right, so so um, we are waking in, up to a, uh, into a new world, right? Post COVID is, uh, you know, we're learning what's happening around us. Uh, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of challenges from a world perspective, right? With, with the post COVID world, you will be driven by technology. They'll have closed economies. Everything is going to be online. The way we interact socially is different. We will have more empathy, I believe. Uh, so it's 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 a different world. I mean, it, it really hit all of us. But um, uh, I think all companies, good great companies, you know, we always prepare for some eventualities, right? And I think uh, that the great lesson we had was the uh, Easter bomb attack last year, right? And we said, okay, business continuity is, is had the top priority because we had uh, such a lovely time since the end of the conflict, you know, and we never took uh, this thing. But I think uh, Easter was a good uh, break. Also, what we did is we had almost 350 people, 400 people 
we went for tenders and we wired every house, that's right? And then we were prepared, uh, you know, during that period and then we caught everything, everything was moved to cloud and we were prepared to work from home. So we had this preparedness, that's right? And this was great. So when uh, when China hit and it was coming towards this thing, we actually uh, closed office one week before, right? Because we were testing our systems and then we had a tracing application because there are guys who have been on for a, a famous cricket match and um, you know we wanted to track where these guys were and who had connection to these things because uh, safety was important. So I think we were prepared and that was good uh, because most of our clients are international, global clients. So we are able to work from home and we have the systems and processes right throughout uh, because we are a digital company uh, and then we do digital services and products. So it was easy for us. But I think the greatest challenge uh, was the employer well-being, right? Because you're dealing with millennials and an XGen you know, for them to, to say work at home, they said, oh, well, you know, come on, this is a different world. How do you handle your staff and how do you get them to be focused? It's, it was the greatest thing because we have a lot of challenges, you know, because we also have uh, a fairly sizable female workforce, you know, so they have to look after their children, they have to cook, you know, it's, it's a different environment. And how do you provide support and then give them guidance to ensure these things happen? So I, think, I think our biggest challenge was um, uh, not the infrastructure, not not uh, this in, is is getting people to adapt for a long haul, right? Uh, the collaboration tools were in place, so I think it is a constant communication was very important. We communicated on a, this thing. This is what is happening, and this is the business risk. Uh, this is what uh, customers are telling us. A constant challenge uh, of of constant communication was. The, the, the beginning of the part. The second is then you have to have movie nights and etc. all the engagement to ensure that you have now a virtual uh, a company and how do you engage them in a virtual, we're all very physical, very contact based and how do we take this? I think um, good positive things have come out and then also because we are in the industry, we are blessed uh, we have a lot of blessings. Uh, if you look at the travel industry or other industries, I mean, you don't know when your next meal is going to come. At least we are blessed. So, so we have to provide some support to communities at large. So that's the way we uh, manage it. Uh, business impact, just to take one thing. For us, uh, billing is 100% and our collections are 100%. That is what we focus. Uh, cash is king. Um, and we have to reduce expenses. So this is norm. Um, but I must say, uh, for people out there, it's not waking up in the morning and saying, you know, you want to be a great work, work place, great place to work. This is something you should have invested. And I think what we have invested over the, over the years, today we have a great trust with employees, right? And to ride through this uh, wave. Thank you. Agree, agree, Mano. Great places to work or great workplaces are not built overnight, right? It takes uh, effort, it takes uh, intent, and then leadership has to carry through um, with uh, what they want to do for the organization and the culture that they want to create. So thank you for sharing those insights on how you are managing or engaging employees, uh, the level of collaboration and communication that you're driving this through. And most importantly, the millennial workforce, which happens to be uh, predominantly a large workforce for this industry. Uh, the challenge, we know that there are generally uh, many challenges uh, with the millennial workforce, but how uh, you are mitigating those challenges at this point in time. So next, um, I would like to move on to uh, Duminda, maybe, um, uh, to uh, ask him to tell us how Synergen, with approximately 500 employees on board, is responding to the crisis. Yes. Thank you, Shanika. So um, we are, our market is the healthcare industry, and even the healthcare industry in the US was affected, uh, especially the non-essential, you know, elective surgeries or non-essential services were on hold. So even our clients were affected as well. Um, but that said, um, just like what Mano stated, we had a we have a very strong business continuity plan and and due to the unfortunate events in April last year, we were able to execute it 
And so this time around, um, when this uh, potential lockdown was going to happen, within three days, we had all 500 uh, working out of their homes um, uh, with, you know, with the IT infrastructure, the equipment, all of that. So we had a, a trial run, but, but really when this happened this time, we were really prepared. So in terms of uh, best practices, you know, we provided a lot of um, tips and best practices working from home, from setting up the environment, about the health and well-being, especially we are in this, like, uh, this new normal of COVID-19, um, but also certain best practices like um, setting schedules where you work only during work hours and shut the computer off and engage with your family. Um, uh, certain basics, you know, to also if not feel isolated. Uh, within our teams, we, we communicate daily. Uh, within our leadership team, we communicate daily, weekly to the respective areas. Uh, and then also on a personal standpoint, you know, utilize this time to engage with their friends, even, you know, remotely or, you know, their parents, uh, others. And I think we've come out of this very strongly. Our uh, talent management team, the surveys, and they call people directly. And we feel that, you know, they all wanted to come back. They're young. They want to come back and engage, but they understand. And they've been very, very productive. Our software teams are delivering at a really fast pace at probably the, the you know, not like our distraction might be helping. Um, so that said, um, we are going to take a cautious outlook and wait and see what happens um, when, with the opening. And like Mano stated, we are uh, in the IT and IT-enabled services industry. So we are much luckier than other industries where to physically be present, whether it's retail, or hospitality, or restaurants. So we're going to have a wait and see approach. And our priority is uh, our employee and their family safety first, uh, and also to make sure there's business continuity. Um, in terms of, you know, moving forward, I think, like Manu stated, we have to have a lot of empathy and we have to use this opportunity to serve. Uh, once, once things open up, I think whether it's in the U.S. or in Sri Lanka, we want to make sure that we help our community and especially the industry, industries which are badly affected because uh, you see the unemployment numbers in the U.S. I'm sure there are similar challenges in Sri Lanka. So we have to be empathetic and find ways to help our community. And going back to just to summarize on great places to work, it's been a wonderful experience the last four years. Um, this is something, you know, building a culture is not something you, you hand over to the HR team. It's a you know, team sport, starts with the leadership team. And, and if you work on, you know, hiring the best people, retaining training and retaining the best folks and providing them an atmosphere and a culture to thrive, I think you can produce the best results or best products. So the sky's the limit. So it's a wonderful investment. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daminda. And i um, glad you are uh, enjoying the experience of building and retaining a great workplace. And also thank you for uh, sharing those insights on maybe on the level of empathy and community that we need, the community-like feeling that we need to develop in this uh, post-COVID uh, phase of our businesses and the business continuity plans of Synergen Health. Um, I would now like to switch over to uh, Lakmini, who has uh, 100 plus people, um, and by far from this panel is amongst the, the smallest of teams. Uh, however, um, I'm sure it doesn't make it any easier uh, just because you have less people uh, on board. Uh, tell us, Lucky, uh, what are your um, experiences in this space here? Yeah? Yes, so um, actually being in IT, so so if you take our company and the people, uh, I would say approximately over 50%, maybe 60%, it's a technical teams. So uh, as, as Mano and Dominda already mentioned, the technical teams pretty much the work from home is a, is a uh, aspect that is quite smooth uh, when we move on to it. So what happened is before, before the first case happened in Sri Lanka, um, we actually, the leadership team, we, we had a meeting and we discussed what are we going to do. Unfortunately, the preparations of EPNs, as you know, all this security had to be set up for people to work from home. Because work from home, honestly, I must say that it wasn't a thing that we were doing before. I didn't even know that we could actually do it. You know, there were all these concerns, how we're going to do work from home in a normal circumstance. So this, this is a completely new experience, but uh, absolutely positive in terms of the workforce. 
so the VPNs were all set up and some sort of trial setups were done. And when the case happened, immediately uh, we made a decision, just, let's just do work from home and keep the people safe. So that, that, that sort of worked out. In fact, the government also took that same stand. So that was quite easy for us. And then the curfew started. So uh, in terms of the activity itself, and, and I'm again talking about the development team, uh, we, we did set up a lot of processes because earlier when we were working from office, uh, we could see people, you know, all the collaboration was happening quite easily face to face. So we, we actually uh, invested in many more systems. I mean, obviously, I think many of us are using like MS Teams, things like that for the video conferencing and uh, setup. But we, we even invested in things like Bitrix and many other systems and lots of chats. So lots of formal chat groups are set up. No one is left behind just because they're at home. They are well aware. It's almost like you know the feeds are coming in, like they're in office. We set up a lot more formal meetings. Some of these meetings are anyway done before with stand-up meetings, but we just made sure that's mandatory, like morning meetings, evening meetings, leadership teams, um, all of us, all of us uh, actually expanded leadership team was set up meeting weekly, uh, things like that. And on the other side, I mean, in terms of mindset, we continue to do our comradeship. So the events, uh, of course, you know, on, on these various um, video channels, uh, some, some of the examples are we had this tiny campfire where, uh, interestingly, uh, all our previous events, we just had only our national team, Sri Lankan team, that usually participated face to face. Uh, but with this aspect, uh, we, we have officers in six countries, and those people also were able to join, you know, play their instruments and sing and things like that. Uh, so there were several events. In fact, I mean, we anyway do it monthly, so we try to continue that. Uh, so overall, um, business is challenging because, you know, we are also B2B and sales is pretty tough when companies are on lockdown and not working. But um, we've, we've taken that challenge. And as, as you know, the other participants uh, mentioned, uh, we also look at the opportunity because after this COVID, I believe that IT will have a lot more business and a lot more awareness. And we, we are already, you know, working on that. So, so thanks. Right. Okay. So uh, thank you, Lucky, for your insights uh, on how you continue to keep uh, your people connected and also being uh, so honest uh, at the outset uh, about uh, you know, being challenged by having to work from home. So you would have expected that IT companies, so IT companies, this comes naturally, right? So even <coughs> IT companies have the challenges, and that brings me back to Dilush. Um, what does it um, uh, take, you know, being an IT-enabled services organization such as yours? How do you all deal with this kind of crisis? It's slightly different to uh, tech companies, I would believe, but uh, yeah, because, uh, because it's more service oriented how are you all dealing with it? Yes, I'll come to that part, uh, how the challenge, how uh, service-oriented company or IT-enabled services are facing the challenges. Uh, before we move on to that, I would like to agree with Duminda and Mano and what, the, what they mentioned, like uh, the Insta attacks actually uh, gave us the opportunity to try and test our BCP. So we did few testing just after that and did trials, look at our BCP plan and uh, there were a few gaps so which we corrected. So it helped us to uh, sl sl moving into this lockdown area without any interruption to the business without uh, making a very big issue to our customers. 90% uh, of our business is for apparel. So we had the uh, signals coming from uh, just after the new year, uh, Chinese new year, where, the Wuhan, where Wuhan was affected and our supply chain was getting affected. So we started getting that heat from that period. So we started looking into our business in a different way. Uh, and especially when it comes to IT enabled services, uh, when it comes to uh, bringing down the cost, uh, you need to start developing the team members and start looking at upskilling them. Now earlier, one of the accounts payable guy in our, uh, in our office, he used to do the reconciliation through the systems. Now he has an attended bot who is doing that reconciliation. So he started moving into another area where we started upskilling that employee as well. So uh, without 
uh, isolating the the we, we cannot isolate the only only the internal environment and we had to take into consideration what is happening outside so there what we have looked at is like uh, in in our bpo business like uh, the impact which we have received is like you know australia started a 50 more than 57% of our of our bpo businesses for australian clients so they started looking at some of the uh, some of the jobs that they would like to take it back because they were happy with the stimulus packages which is being given by the government as well so we had to be price competitive in that scenario uh, apart from that, we have another uh, client from US where we had to uh, do online tutoring, and that actually gave us the opportunity to look at the business because uh, that client is expecting a, an increase in the online platform time to come. So then we need to start uh, looking at that business to grow in in the month of June and July when it times to come. So to keep our employees engaged, the first thing, like we have about 83% of our workforce is millennials. So we need to look at how do we train them, how do we teach them to face, to face this kind of an environment. So what we did, we got a business psychologist who started talking about crisis to character, how to face the crisis situation, how to uh, to be strong mentally, how to work from home, even the equipments are given. We use Microsoft Teams because we have a sister company, H1 Private Limited, one of the largest account Microsoft people in Sri Lanka. So we have the platform in place. So we have the technology in place. Now we need to train the people how to get into that systems and work from home, uh, even with their families, you know, looking after them and having a work-life balance as well. So with all that, uh, one of the important thing is we kept on, as Lakmini mentioned, the events that we used to do, try to do it virtually. Like we have the Fantabulous Friday, we started celebrating the birthdays, all that online. So it created an environment that even though you are working remotely, that you are connected with the organization and the communications were clear and the people were ready to take the challenges because we have built a culture, we have built a team who can face the challenges. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Dilus, for sharing with us uh, slightly different uh, situation in the, in the IGF industry uh, as we did and how you uh, mitigate those uh, risks and handle it with your people. We have, uh, I would like to open this quickly to questions because we don't have very much time. We have about 10 minutes left. There are several, so I'm trying very hard to look through what might be um, the best order and the most effective questions to take up here. Um, so basically, let me um, position this question. Uh, people are asking uh, about retention strategy. Right? Um, what, what, what would you consider to be, um, like, for example, uh, the, the real question is, would like to know uh, the retention strategies of these companies, especially Synergen Health and 99X, right? So if, uh, Dominda, you want to go take a go at that? So I, I think in terms of retention, we want to build a, a career path for people to grow into. So on the solution software line, there's the defined career path and, and I think it's well established. But on our services side, what we've done is we have uh, formed a career path very similar to like a consulting firm, like working for an Accenture or ENY or something like that. And at different phases, there's always a lot of learning. So there's a lot of domain knowledge on the industry, but also in terms of leadership, people management, client management, you know, process innovation. There's a considerable, considerable amount of training we provide. And, and when we are always training and you're always learning, I think a lot of people um, like that because it's all, they're always evolving, right? If, if the work becomes mundane and their career is flat, I think clearly people want to look uh, at different areas and move around. Another area we also invest in is uh, naturally um, not just our training, but also um, in our company, we are always evolving a lot. So, you know, we've been, uh, this company has been there for almost nine years now, uh, just after, just past nine years. But every year we feel like it's a new company. So it provides that excitement and change that everyone also has that uh, adaptation to change. And I think that's really helps in our retention as well. Okay, great. And Mano, you wanna, uh, they want to know specifically from you as well. 
Uh, mute your off, please. Attention is a, is, is a big uh, thing. But I think one, one advice, just one takeaway. Try to hire the right people for your company, right? right? Because uh, you will spend more time trying to uh, retain them and then uh, this thing. I think the interview, you should really know what type of culture you have and the type of person you want to hire. You want to hire a guy who wants to go to the top using a lift or whether you want to eat low, walks the floor or he climbs the ladder. So I think you have to be, I think one of the most important thing about your retention is the type of people you hire. And if you spend a lot of time trying to weed out and get the right guy who will fit your culture, then, then I think half your battle is won. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. There's another one that is interesting. There are many IT startups affected due to COVID for various concerns such as cash flow issues. As tech giants, what are your messages to young IT startups uh, to ensure business continuity? I mean, uh, tech giant or not, right? <laughs> right? Uh, the uh, challenges are much, much um, more intense, I suppose, for people who are just starting up. Like Winnie, as an entrepreneur, would you, if you were starting all over again, or if you were in such a situation, what would you say would be, <laughs> what would your advice be? Yeah? Well, so um, as, as much as it's painful, I mean, especially if you're in B2B, B2B uh, we, we have to accept that the whole world has focused on digital. I mean, look at, look at this event. Would you ever have put up an event on webinar if not for COVID? So uh, everyone was joining this. Uh, even if they've never used a webinar, they will be using a webinar today. So the thing is, um, the, the, whole, the whole focus, digital, uh, is something that almost, I mean, literally everyone uh, has, has been touched with. So therefore, there's this massive opportunity for all of us. And uh, something I also look at is now we, we have officers and we have people in other countries because we need a face-to-face -face meetings. But now, even if we have someone in New York, this is, this is not different, right? Everybody is at home. You have to connect on uh, on internet. So we might as well be in you know Sri Lanka or wherever. We're equalized. So if you're starting up, I, I I think you know I would really encourage starting up IT companies and looking at. I mean I cannot generalize, but definitely there's going to be a much more larger opportunity, Shanika. And yeah. um, it, 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 it's something very much that we should look at, especially from countries like us. Okay, so I can put it to more people. Anyone else wants to comment or I have a few more questions? Yes, Duminda? Yeah, so so in terms of smaller startups, I know it, it must be challenging, but it's also an opportunity. And, and as an entrepreneur, I can always say that it's not a straight line. It's always like this. So this might not be the first time you're going to have a downturn. So I think you have to focus on your customers, focus on delivering value. And also when things are good, always run lean so that you have the cash flow to survive uh, situations like this. I know this has been unprecedented. This is a global phenomena, but the same way my, uh, I want to encourage these startups to you know, stay together, fight it through. I think you can come through this and you're gonna uh, come out stronger. Uh, Shanika, I, I can just yes. make a comment because this is yeah. a big issue, uh, most of the business. So, number one, uh, there is nothing called giants anymore. Everyone is a startup because we have to start thinking how are we going to run our business in the, in the, for, in the next three years. So, so you have to have that mentality. But my message to the startups are this thing. I mean, the figures coming out, you say 70% of our startups or worldwide, they don't have cash for the next three years. But what is most important is for you to pivot and take a stock of your assets whether it is your customers, your competence, and try to shift gears or look for new markets. You cannot say, if you're in the airline industry, there's no point saying, okay, it will take me three years because you're so small, you're nimble, and immediately use that talent in the healthcare, right? And you are much more flexible than any of the companies what we are uh, presenting today, right? You don't have the baggage what uh, we have to carry. Right, we can't uh, be flexible as a startup, but you guys can, right? And and, and start for uh, opportunities. So don't be fixed in your solutions and ideas. You can immediately use those assets and just switch. That's my excellent. Advice. 
we have all found out that we are all startups. Uh, you know, the new normal is going to mean that everybody is going to start, uh, be a startup and have, I think, the opportunity is going to be equal. It depends on how agile you are, how quickly you can innovate, and how quickly you can get back to business, right? So um, it is uh, four o'clock, but I'm going to take one last. There are a few more. What we will do is because we know um, who these questions are coming from, and if it is directed at a a particular speaker we will get responses and uh, send it to the registered participant because we have the email uh, contacts with us but let me throw this one question that maybe um, the panel itself can answer what is your experience on technology usage for passing information to both team members uh, both operational and hr so they're differentiating you know people who are frontline and otherwise and hr and also differentiating in the context of age difference. So believing that different messaging uh, or communication needs to happen for different age bands, right? And there's a second part to this question, which says, can you differentiate work from home situation versus working in that same style from office? So basically it revolves around how do we communicate effectively separately to operational staff versus HR? uh people in the teams of different age groups and is it different when we are working from home versus working from the office loaded question <laughs> uh dilush you want to take a um, go at it first uh i i would like to take that uh, question in a different way like the trying to differentiate hr and the operations actually hr is part of the operation so whatever that you communicate with your rest of your team members I would engage HR right throughout the conversation. So that will actually help to uh, bridge the gap. Like, you know, the communication should not happen, as I mentioned, through HR to the people. It's from the leader. So in the leadership, we have our HR manager. So thereby, I do not see a great differentiation when it comes to communication. But as you said, different age group, we have different way of communicating. Uh, when we started communicating using the WhatsApp group at the initial stage, some, they have never gone through their WhatsApp messages also. So we had to call them and train them, tell them. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we got different cultures mixing together at Edge Connect. So we had to train them, we had to uh, educate them, and then, but luckily we have a large workforce who adopt and embrace this technology. And, and it was easy to communicate with uh, Microsoft Teams and move on. Um, I, I know I did say that this is going to be the last question, but there is an interesting question that some of you may want to take a hit at, right? And it's generally open to the uh, entire audience. There are some that have come uh, specific to a speaker, which we will uh, forward to the speakers and get responses and share with uh, all our participants. And this one is, hi, any plans to move to a gig work working in, uh, arrangement, right? Something new to Sri Lanka, let's say. Um, Mano, a gig culture or a big gig working arrangement? Yeah. Uh, or anyone? I, I, think, I think we will all have to adapt to a gig economy, right? I mean, it 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 will happen, right? I mean, it, nothing is going to be permanent. But uh, let me uh, take. I like the other question, right? Uh, okay. In how okay. you communicate, and let me take it, and I'll leave this gig to. Um, others. Um, I think what is important, what I can share what we have done and maybe change this. First is we set up a COVID task force, right, which encompasses right throughout different diverse jobs, right. And uh, of course, HR is part of it, operations are part of it. And then we have done a lot of surveys to find the heartbeat. So your communication, I think I agree with Manish, that has to be to everyone. Right, you right. have to. This is the time you bring the whole company together, right, and communicate very precisely, because you're going to communicate good messages, and most of, uh, often you're going to communicate very, very difficult um, messages, right, because you might have to downsize, you might have to cut this thing. So I think you have to have this communication is going to be key, right, and then you have to do it through. Uh, uh, people who really understand and then that this is going to reach every part of the organization right so i think it's yeah. communication uh, was key, key pre-covid as well yes yeah, communication this was is, really this is really much key. More, more key 
Right. Right. Okay. Now that's unfortunately all the time we have for today. We are over by five minutes, and uh, in in the interest of uh, you know what we committed to our people, we would like to bring this to a close. And uh, before I hand you over to Kaniru, I'd like to thank all of our uh, esteemed uh, panelists, our speakers today, um, uh, for for sharing your insights and spending the time with us um, and uh, interacting and taking on the questions as well. Uh, your insights have been uh, very uh, useful, I'm sure, to everybody who is logged into this event. Thank you very much. Kaniru? Unmute, Kaneru. You're on mute. Yes. Thank you, Shanika. So we believe this session was inside. Not anymore. All right. I hope uh, people. All right. So we believe the session was insightful for you to understand elements that make, uh, make up a great workplace. And we also believe you got some practical feedback on how to fast track your organization in these trying times. And do contact us at Green Place to Work. We'll be willing to help you in your own journey towards a better workplace. And once again, a big thank you goes out to our esteemed panel of speakers, to DLFT, to SASCOM, our event partners, and, and to our wonderful audience who uh, we, we do hope you'll join us with the next line of webinars you've uh, already arranged. I think it will be visible to you on your screen right now. We have a webinar happening today, tonight, an interactive session with Dr. Martin Goldsmith, the number one leadership thinker and the number one executive coach in the world. We have a webinar tomorrow, which will be around very interesting initiatives for your managers, for your people managers in particular. And also do join us next week around the same time mm. to listen to insights from best workplaces in Sri Lanka. So you can copy the registration links to uh, link to all these events, which will appear on your chat box on your screen. And thank you so much for joining with us today. Do take care and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank okay, Shanik, we are gone. Huh? Yeah, all good, uh, Mano. Thank you, Mano, Devinda, Lakmini, and Dilush. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Right, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Manu, Mr. Duminder, Mrs. Lakmini, and also Mr. Dilush. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. 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 Bye, Sharon. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Duminder, for sorry to wake you up so early. <laughs> okay. Okay.